Hi everybody, it's Mr. Snavely here, the Bethany School Chaplain, and I sure wish that I could be with all of you at the chapel, which you see behind me here um, today, but unfortunately um, we have to be apart for a little while longer. Um, but I'm glad that you joined us for our first ever Bethany School online chapel. Uh, today. It's a chance for us, even though we're not together physically, to be together um, in our hearts and uh, in our relationship with God so that we can pray with and for each other. And so um, uh, we're going to be doing these chapels every week on our normal chapel day. It'll be available to you that you can join us uh, in the morning at chapel time if that works for you. And if not, um, then it'll be available for you to, to fit it into your schedule wherever you can. Um, just so important that we try to stay connected to God and to each other, especially at this time when we're all feeling a little anxious um, about the, the different ways that, that our lives have changed recently until we can be together again. So again, I'm so glad that you're with us. Um, I hope that you were able to download our service sheets uh, that I sent out via email so that you can follow along with our chapel services. If you need those still, um, and also if you have any prayer requests, please email me at school and I'll make sure to get them for your family. Um, since we have some parents um, and maybe other family members joining us uh, for these chapels that aren't normally with us. As we go through our service uh, this first time, I'm going to sort of be explaining about what we're doing as we go and why we do it, which is, it's always good to think about what we do and why we do it, um, but especially we want to make you feel comfortable and welcome and uh, able to fully participate in our prayer time together. So um, the one way that we always start out chapel at Bethany School is we take a few seconds of quiet and a few deep breaths just to sort of collect ourselves and make sure that we're really uh, aware that we're joining together with each other and with God. And then after that, I invite everyone to stand up for our first song. Uh, we're going to do one today that we start chapel with a lot at Bethany. It's called Today is the Day. And it's one that reminds us that every day is a gift from God um, and that God is with us throughout each and every day, no matter what comes. Uh, so I'll start the video for that in just a second. Uh, but we always start out by saying today, this is the day that the Lord has made. And the response to that is, let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Good job, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that song and remembered all of the motions. Um, after we sing our opening hymn, uh, we always recognize that we're entering into God's presence. Um, by sa I say, uh, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And everyone responds, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. And then I always invite everyone to join me in saying the Bethany School Prayer. Thank you, O oh God, for calling us to be a family. Teach us how much we need each other. Help us to love, to serve, to respect, and to forgive each other. And help us to know you are with us as we pray together, learn together, and play together. Each day, let us hear your word so that together we may grow in Christ, serving you faithfully and with joy. Amen. And then after the Bethany School prayer, I invite everybody to um, have a seat and we sing, uh, I'm sorry, we read our first reading from scripture. And um, our readings from scripture usually come one reading from the Hebrew scriptures or the Old Testament and one from the Christian scriptures or the New Testament. And I mentioned in my first video that we follow something called the lectionary, which is designed to match up with the church calendar and help us sort of get a sense as we move throughout the year of who God is and what God is calling us to be in different seasons. And so um, our reading from today was the one that was read in a lot of churches. Uh, the readings for today were ones that were read in a lot of churches this past Sunday. And our first reading comes from the Hebrew scriptures. It's from Psalm 130. From the depths of my soul, I have cried out to you, God. Please hear my voice. Let your ears hear me and listen to what it is that I have to say. If you were to count up everything anyone had ever done wrong, God, who would be left standing? But you are forgiving, and I am amazed by the forgiveness that you offer. I will wait for you patiently. My soul waits for you. As I take your word into my heart, I can feel the hope. My soul waits for you more anxiously than people who wait for a long, dark night to come to an end. People of God, people of Israel, wait with me for God, because I know that God has mercy. With God, there is plenty of mercy and goodness, and God will bring all of uh, you back into relationship with him. The word of the Lord. And the response is, thanks be to God. Really love this um, psalm, and it seems perfect for a time when we are waiting for things to get back to, to more normal. Um, I love this idea in it that um, people are waiting for a long, dark night to come to an end, but that we will wait with God because we know God loves us and has mercy. Beautiful. The Psalms are a collection of songs and poems uh, from the Hebrew scriptures where people are crying out to God um, and telling them how they really feel. And uh, I think that this is a really nice psalm for uh, this moment that we have, find ourselves in right now. So usually we would do another song after our Hebrew uh, scripture. Uh, but um, I'm going to keep the songs down to one at the beginning and one at the end of our chapels, at least uh, for a while. But uh, that means that we'll, it'll take us right into our gospel reading. The gospels are those um, first four books of the Christian scriptures that uh, tell us about what Jesus did and said when he was with his disciples. Um, and uh, so many amazing stories. Um, this one that we're going to read today comes from the Gospel of John. It's the last gospel. If you start reading into the Christian scriptures and you come across Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, John is the last one that we'll come across. It was also the last one uh, to be written. And uh, this is a really interesting story. Um, keep your ears out for the name of our school in this story. Lazarus lived with his sisters, Martha and Mary. They were all good friends of Jesus. They lived in a place called Bethany. Lazarus got very sick and his sisters sent word to Jesus. When Jesus heard this, he said, I think the sickness will allow God's glory to show through, even if Lazarus dies. So Jesus stayed for a while where he was rather than going to see Lazarus right away. A couple of days later, Lazarus said to his disciples, let's go to Judea. His disciples said, but the last time that we were there, they tried to hurt you. Why would you want to go back? Jesus replied, we've only got so much time on earth to do good. Lazarus is sleeping and I want to go wake him up. The disciples said, well, if he's sleeping, there's really no reason to go. He'll be fine. 
Jesus said, no, I mean that Lazarus has died. I'm glad that I wasn't there when he died, but now I've got something that I want to show you so that you can believe. Let's go. Thomas the twin said to the, his fellow followers, oh, well, here we go. Might as well go with him and maybe die with him. When they got there, Lazarus had been in the grave for four days. Many people had come to comfort his sisters, Martha and uh, Mary. Martha heard Jesus and ran out to him while Mary stayed in the house. Martha said, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I know even now that God will do whatever you ask of him. Jesus said, Martha, you know that your brother will rise again. Of course, I believe in the resurrection on the last day, Martha said. Jesus looked right at her and said, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever trusts in me will be alive, whether they live or die. Do you believe this? Martha said, yes, Lord. I do believe that you are the one God has sent into the world, the Messiah. She went back and told Mary that Jesus was asking for her. Mary knelt at Jesus' feet and said, Lord, if you'd only been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her crying and saw that all the people in the house were crying, he felt the deep pain of losing Lazarus. The pain shook him right to his core and he cried. Where is his grave? Show me, Jesus said. Come and see, Lord. Some people could see how much Jesus loved his friend Lazarus. Others wondered why, if he could open the eyes of a blind man, why he couldn't have kept Lazarus from dying. Jesus came to the grave, which was on the side of a cave with a big stone rolled up against the opening. He told them to roll away the stone. Martha said, don't do that. He's been in there four days. The smell will be awful. Jesus said, haven't I told you that if you believed, you would see God's glory? So they took the stone away. Jesus uh, looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. He, and he yelled loudly, Lazarus, come out of there. And Lazarus came out. His hands and feet were still wrapped with strips of cloth, and his face was wrapped up too. Jesus said to the people around, set, free, set him free from the cloth that is binding him and let him go. Many of the people who saw what happened believed in Jesus after that. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So after we have our gospel reading, I usually give um, a little reflection on it, either me or someone else from our community. We've had um, different people, uh, guests come in, uh, members of our faculty, and um, it's always just a good chance for us to think a little bit about what we've heard. And um, excuse me, the story of Jesus and uh, Mary and Martha and Lazarus is uh, an amazing one. And there's a couple things in it that I think um, might be worth thinking about as we um, are in this difficult time that we find ourselves in now where we're not able to be together at school and we're worried about people who are sick and, um, and uh, we are hearing a lot of bad news. The first thing is, um, I think that uh, it really always struck me that Jesus um, cried. You know, if anybody knew what God was up to and trusted that God was going to make everything all right in the end, it was Jesus. Um, he was uh, fully a human, but he was also fully God. And so he knew that God's power uh, called us all into being and would never let us go, even if we got sick and died. So he knew that, but he still could feel the sadness of the people around him and it made him cry too. And I think that makes me feel better because sometimes when I hear a lot of bad news or I'm worried about people um, or I'm worried about um, things going on, uh, it makes me want to, to, to cry too. And it's okay to feel bad. Um, Jesus showed us that, that um, when you love people and if you are worried about them, sometimes you're going to feel bad. But the key is that that's not the end of the story. The end of the story is when Jesus uh, uses uh, his power to call Lazarus out of the tomb and back into new life. And as uh, we get um, closer to Easter, we're going to be talking more about that uh, next week, about this amazing love of God that, that calls us into being and that can't be stopped even by um, uh, sickness and death. And I think that that's something really important for us to remember too. Yeah, we hear bad news and yeah, we're worried about people, but God's love is always with us and God's love is so powerful uh, that nothing can stop it. Not sickness, uh, not death, not, not feeling separated, not loneliness. Um, nothing uh, can separate us from the love of God. Um, so those are a couple thoughts that I had as I was reading through this gospel reading today.
So um, after the gospel uh, reading and after a little bit of reflection, we always do something called the confession. Um, it's a time when we sort of take a look at ourselves and say, God, there's some things that we've done that we wish we hadn't done. And uh, there's some things that we uh, should have done that maybe we didn't do. Um, and then we just sort of uh, trust in God's love and mercy to come alongside us and to um, help us and help us find our way back to the path of what God is doing. Uh, so we always say together, Loving God, we do not always do what we should. We have hurt others, and in hurting others, we have hurt you. Help us to be sorry. Please forgive us. Help us uh, to do better. Help us to trust that you always love us, even when we do wrong things. Help us to want to do things your way. Amen. And then I say, may the God who loves us, who knows us and knows when we are sorry, forgive us all our sins. Help us to do get better and give us joy and peace. Amen. And at that point, um, I always say, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And everyone says back to me and also with you. And then we exchange peace, which usually means um, grabbing hands. Uh, so we have sort of um, uh, fixed our relationship with God by saying, hey, God, there's some stuff um, in our relationship. There's some stuff separating us. Uh, please forgive us. And we know that God forgives us. And now we reach out to the people around us to say, hey, let's have peace between us two. So um, as we were approaching the, the spring break, we changed um, from handshaking uh, to be safe to um, uh, a simple bow with our hands together like that, um, borrowing from our Hindu friends who say namaste, um, which means the, the God, um, God's presence in me recognizes God's presence in you. So let there be peace uh, between us. So I hope that there is peace with you. Uh, we talk uh, sometimes in chapel about the peace that passes understanding, which means that even though it seems like maybe we wouldn't have peace, God's love is so powerful that uh, it can fill us with peace, even when we are a little bit scared. So after um, we exchange the peace, then we have an opportunity to do uh, birthday blessings. And so um, I thought that uh, just to be sure that we got everybody because our, our time was a little bit interrupted, we're gonna go ahead and do birthday blessings for everybody who had a birthday in March. Um, so that means Cameron, um, Mari, Brooklyn, Tori, Price, Gabe, Quentin, Journey, Josiah, Gabby, Jendaya, uh, Elizabeth, Rogue, Elisha, uh, Josie, Jashani, Kylie, Stella, Skylar, Lauren, Caden, and Patrick, um, all of you guys, we're so glad uh, for each one of you. You're such a blessing to us. You're a great gift to us. And we hope that you had, even in this sort of a strange time to celebrate a birthday, um, good birthdays. And uh, the way that we uh, sort of give something back to our birthday people is that we ask God's blessing on them. And I always ask everyone to put out their hand and to help me out with this. So if you could put out your hand and we'll say, Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which does pass understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So after the uh, birthday blessings, uh, we usually sing another hymn, um, and then it's time for the prayers of the people. Usually in lower school chapel, the second graders lead us through these prayers, and then we respond um, when they finish uh, lifting up a prayer by saying, receive our prayer. So um, this is a time when I would love to share some prayer requests uh, from you all. So if you send some of those to me, I will definitely add them to our list. Um, please know that I am praying for each one of you guys by name uh, over while we're apart, and uh, we're praying, obviously, especially right now, for anyone who is sick or scared or worried or working so hard to take care of people who are. Uh, we pray for all of our members of our community and our extended Bethany family. We pray for the sisters, um, for uh, especially for those working in uh, hospitals and uh, places where they're taking care of people. We lift all of them up to God. And then let's go ahead and um, follow our prayers of the people from our service. Holy God, thank you that every person in the world is your beloved child. Please help each person in the world to love and to forgive each other as you love and forgive us. God of love, receive our prayer. Healing God, thank you for your church. Please show all who worship you how to get over what we argue about and to serve you willingly as Jesus taught us. God of love, receive our prayer. 
Wise God, thank you for Bethany School. Help us to live as a family with love and respect for each other. God of love, receive our prayer. Caring God, thank you that even our smallest concerns matter to you. God of love, receive our prayer. Generous God, thank you for all the ways that you show us your love. Thank you for all the reasons that we have to love and praise you. God of love, receive our prayer. Ever present God, we thank you for always hearing our prayers and for blessing and for loving us so much that you answer in the ways that are best for us. Receive the prayers that we offer today in the name of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And then I invite everyone to say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And then uh, we wrap up with a closing prayer, which is, God be with us as we go. God be with us through this day. God be with us as we work and think and hear and speak and play wherever we go. God is there and all is well. And then before the dismissal, we always have a closing hymn. Um, during Lent, we usually end our chapels in quiet and leave the, the chapel in quiet because it's a Lent is a special time, a season leading up to Easter for us to think um, very carefully about God's, uh, what God is doing in us and helping us get ready for Easter. And so I thought we might end with kind of a, a quieter song that Miss Boyd has been teaching us over the course of this year. And um, uh, it's called Father, I, I Adore You. And so um, I'll sing it and I would love it if you guys can sing along with me too. We sing Father, I Adore You. Then we sing um, Jesus, I Adore You. And then Spirit, Holy Spirit, I Adore You. So you guys know the song, please join with me. Father, I adore you, lay my life before you, how I love you, Jesus, I adore you, lay my life before you, how I you spirit i adore you lay my life before you how i love you god does love us and i love you guys too i was really glad to be able to have this special um, uh, online chapel time together. I hope you'll join us each week and make some time in your schedule so that we can pray together. Please do send me any prayer requests or any other um, thoughts. Uh, I'd love to, to connect with any of you. I'm also here if there's anything else that uh, we can do at Bethany School to support you and your family during this time. I miss you guys and I uh, can't wait to see you in person again, but thanks again for joining us for this online chapel. So we always end by saying, uh, I say, let us bless the Lord. And everyone says together, thanks be to God. Amen.